So it's time to start digging in on the 128 project here. I really have like two things I want to do and some of the work is going to kind of overlap. Uh, I have to do something about the current condition that the engine's in. Um, it smokes very badly uh, when it runs. So I don't know if it's the valve seals. I don't know if it has a failed ring. There is a lot of oil um, in the exhaust manifold. When I, when I pulled the, the exhaust off below, there's a lot of oil in the exhaust track. So oil's getting in somewhere. Um, so I have to address that. And part of that is also, I'm just going to go through the fluids on this thing because it's I'm going to drain the cooling system. I'm going to drain the, the oil that's in it and see what's going on and figure out if I need to pull the, the manifolds off, the intake and the exhaust just to get a better look. If I have to pull the, the uh, cam box off or the head off um, and make a decision on kind of what I'm going to do regarding the engine. The other thing I got to do is there's some just cosmetic stuff that overlaps as well. So I'm going to remove the giant bumper. Uh, I already removed the rear. I'm going to swap out the grill, but remove the grill. And on these cars, it's nice to have the grill removed because basically right through the opening right here is the best way to access the like distributor and the front part of the engine where like the, the spark plugs are and all that fun stuff. So it's actually a really easy to do through the, the, the grill opening. Um, I'm gonna pull the front wheels off, same thing. I gotta remove the inner fender liner, I think, because I wanna get a good look at the axles and the CV boots and see if I need to get in through the, the wheel wells in order to figure out with anything regarding like the front half of the engine or anything like that. So right now I'm going to put it up on the lift, drain the coolant, and probably remove the wheels, remove the bumper, and remove the grill. So with the wheel off, to get the front bumpers off, there's these long, like hydraulic standoffs that support the front bumper that go through the front fascia and they go in here somewhere. So we have to remove the fender liner. The liners on these are only held in by two bolts. I just undid it. There's one screw here and one over here. And now the liner just comes out, it's clipped in to the fender lip. So you just kind of got to push it inward to, and you can see the little clip right there, right? You push it in to disengage it and then you just carefully work the whole thing out. So I'm going to go. There we go. Off it comes. So now we have the exposed inner fender and you can see the bracket that holds on that front, uh, kind of like piston, holds on the front bumper. So we're gonna undo these two bolts and then it slides right out the front of the vehicle. Gotta disconnect the little lights that are here in the bump in the bumper here. Um, but other than that, front bumper comes right off. Rear bumper is held on the same way, um, but it's much easier because the these brackets, this style bracket, is actually in the trunk. So you just open the trunk, remove them, and the rear bumper slides out. Disassembly is coming along pretty good and grill the bumpers off um, Again, it's a matter of Disconnecting the little plugs for the lights that are in the bumper Undoing those bolts on those brackets and removing those brackets that really hold on the the 
the piston part of the uh, the bumper. And then removing these two little, I think they were 10 millimeter um, nuts on the inside so the rubber end of the bumper could come off. So, I mean, as soon as the bumper comes off these things, it really changes the whole look. Um, you really get like an appreciation for this curve right here and like just how it doesn't look as boxy, even though it's a very boxy design. Um, I removed the grill because as I mentioned, the kind of need to remove it to access a lot of things. So like, I mean, you can see right there in the dark there, that's the distributor cap. The spark plugs are like right there behind the horns here. Um, and then ultimately you need to remove the grill to access the two bolts here and the two on that side, which hold the hood hinge on. So if you want to remove the hood, you got to do those two bolts and it comes right off. Put tape on the headlights because race car, I was being goofy. Um, but yeah, it's coming apart. Inner fender liners are out, uh, which is nice. I took off the cover here that kind of protected the belt and the pulleys just so I could access the engine. Um, there were these like splash guards riveted here. So it had like a metal bracket at the top and then a big rubber kind of splash guard on both sides. You can see the four shiny rivets that I drilled out. Again, I just want to get to get, be able to get back here and clean this all up. So the wheel well is kind of where I want it. Um, here's the bumper. So I'm actually really amazed at how heavy this thing is. It's pretty heavy. And like I said, there are the, the piston parts that went all the way in. And there are the, the two little bolts that went through right here. Um, one thing I'm going to modify on this or upgrade is the grill. So here's the OEM grill, which was in pretty good shape. Just has that little, I don't know, piece of trim or something missing at the bottom there. Um, but I'm going to swap it to a... 128 rally style grill which had a honeycomb grill and amazingly i was on marketplace and i found a guy that literally had one fiat part for sale that he found it like a tag sale or something didn't know what it was listed it and here it is it was chrome when i got it from him because i think the older models some of the older models had the honeycomb in uh in chrome so i just painted it black to make it look like a 128 rally grill. And then I got like a cheap eBay Abarth uh, emblem that I just stuck on the center, but I'll maybe go to a Fiat emblem the, when I find the right one, like the little wreath style emblem. That's what goes on these. But there it is. I mean, and I'll pop it on real quick just so you can get a gist of what it looks like. Um, but, you know, it's gonna come back off so I can undo the hood and do all the, uh, the uh, maintenance that I need to do to the engine. So there it is with the grill installed. And like I said, it just makes the front end of this car pop. It looks so much uh, sportier. Um, I'm gonna do one more silly cosmetic thing while I'm here, um, completely out of order since I have a bunch of engine stuff I need to do. But, uh, you know, why why waste uh, why waste time doing mechanicals when you could do cosmetics, right? So I'm gonna justify this by saying I kinda need to do it to figure out exactly what I'm gonna do with these holes, um, if, in case I'm welding them up or not, or if I need to weld brackets for what I'm about to do anyway. Um, I came across a vintage set in the box of Corello driving lights. Um, these are Italian. These are like, you know, period correct, original. They're a little dirty, but I don't think these were ever installed. Um, I mean, look at them. So I got to figure out where I'm going to mount these since I don't have a front bumper. So I don't know if I'm going to make brackets and I want to, you know, check the location, figure out what I want to do. So I'm going to do that right now. So I think that's the positioning I'm gonna go with. 
I would have probably wanted to move them a little further in, but it does such a good job hiding the hole that uh, I think that's where I'm gonna run them. Um, they're actually really easy to mount. So the, the system I came up with was just basically drilling a hole in the fascia here. And uh, this stud is really movable. So you could actually flip it all the way around so you can mount it basically perpendicular on the surface. So that's kind of how I did it, doing it like that with the hole like that. And you can see the stud point straight back. And they're small enough where I don't think I have to put something to stabilize the top, but I'll keep an eye on it. And the other reason I kind of like the outboard mounting is they're really easy to get to. So that rear mounting nut is right there. Um, if I went any further in, it's kind of tough to get back in here uh, with a tool to tighten the nut. So I will do the other one. So here we are at both lights mounted, the rally style grill mounted, and the bumper removed. So I don't know, I think it looks much better. Um, I think once I get it on the ground with the wheels back on, it's gonna look awesome. So if you wanna, if you're interested in following this 128 build, click like on this video, subscribe to the channel. There's a playlist dedicated strictly to the 128. And uh, we'll see you soon.